Yes, Mark, what do you think the market's going to keep pricing in in terms of rate hikes? I mentioned with Jan, you're looking at another hike now priced in for November 2022. Yeah, we think that the announcement today is going to give the market more confidence to move ahead with the pricing of rate hikes for next year. We're seeing almost the full rate hike priced in June, another in November, and close to three hikes priced by the end of next year. We think that the announcement today should allow for the Fed to pivot to acknowledge the upside risks from inflation and begin to talk about how they will respond. In many ways, Fed leadership was somewhat constrained in making this pivot while waiting for the White House decision. But now that that's out of the way, that that should certainly allow for the Fed to shift a bit more in that direction. Does that mean a faster taper, Mark? So we certainly see risks uh, that are skewing in that direction. We'll get the FOMC minutes on Wednesday. We're likely to hear a rising chorus of voices that are advocating for a faster pace of taper. We'll have another employment report and another CPI report ahead of the December FOMC. So this will certainly be a live discussion, we think, at that meeting. But it still seems a little too early to us to imagine that the Fed will go ahead and announce in December a faster pace of taper. What instead we think is more likely is uh, a truncated pace or a shortened pace of taper. It's quite possible by the time we get to the March meeting next year, assuming that inflation continues to come in quite elevated, that the Fed announces that, you know what, we don't need to finish the taper. We're already buying such a small amount of treasuries, and we want to provide a signal to the market for a June hike. And they could just stop the last month or potentially the last two months of taper. And we don't think that it would have a material impact on the market because the Fed will be buying so little at that point in time anyway. Fair enough. Mark, I'm curious as to get your take on real yields because for whatever move we've seen in rates, whatever we wind up expecting from the Fed, the theme of TINA, there is no alternative, still stands pretty firm because real yields are still so negative, uh, even if they're off their lows, even if the real yield curve is a bit steeper. What's going to materially re-rate real yields? I think it's this Fed, uh, we think it's this likely Fed pivot that's going to be upcoming. Um, we believe that the path of break-evens and the path of real rates are somewhat inconsistent. Um, it implies essentially a very, very modest reaction from the Fed and a market that seems to believe that the Fed will keep policy extraordinarily accommodative for as long as is necessary. We do see risks that real rates start to rise as you see a bit more of a hawkish pivot from the Fed, and today's leadership announcement should allow for that. And today we're seeing real rates and break-evens reprice accordingly. Mm -hmm. Break-evens are narrowing, real rates are rising. They're still very, very low. But we do think that this is likely the start of a shift that we're going to see from the Fed and then in real rates that should allow for modest increases in real rates. And that's going to be a headwind for risky assets. We do worry that if the Fed does indeed turn hawkish, signal that they're changing their stance, they're more worried about yep. inflation, they feel like they've met full employment, that those higher real rates really could be a constraint on risky assets. Mark, all hell's breaking loose over here in Europe. We've got riots over the weekend, uh, COVID cases are climbing, lockdowns are back on the agenda. How do you price that? Well, it's a downside risk. Uh, the market certainly uh, incorporated that into pricing on Friday. Um, it does mean that global growth could face ongoing headwinds. Um, but look, in the U.S., we continue to focus on fundamentals. You've got a very strong uh, rate of growth um, right now in the economy. You've got very healthy labor markets, and you've got inflation that's running very, very high. Um, right now, we haven't seen inflation uh, break-evens move outside of recent ranges, at least materially. Uh, but the risk is that they will, and the Fed has to be responsive for that. The Fed knows that COVID is an ongoing headwind, but they've got to be focused on the data that they see in the U.S. and the fact that it's quite unlikely we're going to see such extreme measures taken in the U.S. Uh, and that the economy is likely going to continue to do well. So COVID is a downside risk. What's happening in the rest of the world is a downside risk. But mm. right now, the U.S. economy remains very strong, and the Fed's got to respond. And we right, think Mark, they likely will. Mark, last question here. Uh, the belly and the front end getting hit pretty hard. The two-year yield up five basis points. Points your top trade right now. 
So we've recommended being tactically short duration. Um, we think that the belly of the curve is likely what's going to reprice the most. That's really fives, tens. Um, but look, the two-year part of the curve could certainly begin to move even more than the belly um, if we do start to hear a bit more of a hawkish shift from this uh, new, new new round of Fed leadership. Um, and we do think that they're likely to pivot in the weeks and months ahead.